So we are live recording now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to um, share my screen, uh, which, and then the, the presentation will pop up, um, and we'll go from there. So everyone should be able to see um, the presentation right now. Let me, yep, let me check one thing before we, yes. Share screen. So, now, of course, uh, Uh, one second now. It's for me. It's the first time um, doing it this way, so it's uh, a little bit figuring out how it works exactly. Uh, let's see. Okay, that one. That one. Can someone please confirm that um, the screen FHA coach vision, a clear structure gives room for adventure is on right now? Yes, perfect, thank you. Thanks, Taylor. Um, first of all, I'm gonna do a, a short introduction of, of who I am for the people that don't exactly know who I am. Um, <laughs> Taylor, you can also, um, if, I can see you, Taylor, if, you, if you're comfortable with being in the top screen, that's, that's awesome. If you don't want people to see, you can press in the left button and stop video. Um, my name is uh, Rolf Maastricht. I am head coach of um, Field Hockey Alberta, our high performance director. Um, and I'm also the, the coach for UFC Dinos. Um, I've been asked to... Uh, do an online seminar today and I've picked one of the topics that I find really interesting and that is a little bit about the um, player coach relationship and a little bit about uh, uh, structures um, and how we can have freedom within structures. This is going to be an interactive seminar so um, I'm gonna ask some questions uh, if you want to give an answer Press, press the unmute button, um, give your answer, and we can discuss it. Um, I'm starting off with a picture, uh, with two pictures actually, um, on, the, on the top. Well, actually, what do we see here? Is there anyone that can explain the top left picture for me? What do they see? Well, you can see it's just a, a coach starting at a bunch of kids. It's not exactly ideal. Interesting. So, would you say that that is how you would like with, um, it's grand, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. Yeah. Is that something how you would like to be coached? Not really, no. <laughs> Not unless, really. Unless, unless we have to. Mm -hmm. and, and if you look at the right bottom, what do you see there? Um, it's more of a coach letting the kids play and, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Would you like to be coached like that? Well, not fully because it's good to get coaching and not just stand there looking at things happening. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Are there people with different opinions? There's got to be more opinions out there. Um, other question then. What would be more successful, short term or long term? Top left or bottom right? I think. I mean, maybe, oh, sorry. <laughs> I think you have to have a mix of both to be successful. Because mm -hmm. if you're the top left, if you're getting yelled at the whole time, you're not going to have trust with your coach. You're just going to be feared. So you can't really give feedback. And the bottom right is you really, really like can't succeed if you don't know what you're doing wrong and they're just laying back there. So I feel like long-term success, you have to have both. That's, uh, 
really good answer. Grant, you wanted to say something too? Uh, it was just the same, really. <laughs> <laughs> just the same. Well, I think that's, that's really spot on. And um, what I like about these two pictures is that these two pictures are two extremes. Uh, indeed, on the right bottom, you see a coach who is obviously really re relaxed, is, is sitting back, is watching the game, is laughing. Um, on, the, on the top left, you'll see uh, a guy screaming at kids. Um, I don't know for what reason. Uh, maybe he's singing a song, uh, but it's hard to see that from just a picture. But I think, and I believe it was, was Elena who said it, that um, in, indeed for long-term success, there needs to be a certain point of discipline. And I'm not saying the screaming towards the kids is discipline, but there, there needs to be set rules and, and have a clear vision on how we want to go forward. But it is also important, as we can see in the right bottom, to be relaxed and to make it fun to perform. And we're going to the next picture. And that is this one. Can, can someone explain what we see here? Um, it's an athlete and a coach yelling at each other. <laughs> well, that's, <laughs> that's pretty spot on. So what do you think of this situation? I don't know. You don't know. What do you think that could have happened in this situation? Like a disagreement in the play or something. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to add something in and I'm really curious about your opinion next. What do you see now? Unrealistic expectations. <laughs> Unrealistic expectations. Why? Because it's the goalie. Um, it is the goalie, indeed. So what do you think is wrong with the situation or good in the situation? So the good part is that the coach is trying to almost it like put some discipline, but it's unrealistic discipline. Like you should be asking your goalie to have to score more. Absolutely. Great answer. And that is exactly where I, where I want to go to. Um, I, in my vision, I think it's really important that um, if we look at coaching and if we look at playing for a coach, there needs to be a certain discipline and there also needs to be a certain freedom where um, there are realistic expectations and players can do what they're good at. That goalie that's standing there is probably not the top scorer of the team. And that goalie is probably in net because he's the, big, the best goalie. Um, so when it comes down to coaching and when it comes down to making structures and when it comes down to playing for a coach, I think it is important that there are realistic uh, guidelines, realistic structures in, in our play. Is it important to listen to your coach? Anyone? Yes. Why? Because they're trying to do what's best for you. Mm -hmm. Good answer. Do you always listen to your coach? Taylor. Yes, I try to. <laughs> yes, you try to. That's awesome. Who doesn't always listen to his coach? No one. Um, yeah, sometimes. <laughs> okay, can you give me, and it doesn't have to be field hockey, but can you give me an, uh, an example from when you didn't uh, listen to your coach? When, when, you, when you disagree with them mm -hmm. uh, and you just seem like it's not the right thing to do. You just kind of tune out a little bit. And, mm -hmm. and is that on the field when he gives you or she gives you an assignment to do? Or is it in, in a halftime talk? It's more like practices and things. And sometimes when it, was, it happened to me in hockey. So when I was on the bench, they, mm -hmm. um, he was giving me information that was completely useless. So, <laughs> so is a coach always right? No, no, definitely. And, and that, that's another thing where, where I want to go to. Um, 
it is important to listen to your coach indeed it is because in the end that coach is gonna decide if you're on the pitch or not or on the ice or not in, in this case um but it is extremely important as a player to hold on to your own creativity and this is going to be really dangerous to say and a lot of coaches are not going to like it some of the best players don't always listen to their coach and in the end a player on the field can judge the situation the best and can judge if he needs to he or she needs to make a pass or if he or she needs to go for the one-on-one -on -one or whatever decision um, a coach often can see the big lines like the, the big structures within the team but in the end the players need to make a decision uh, on the field so what does a coach actually do in my vision a coach uh, main responsibility is to generate a game model and within that game model uh, the players have freedom and um, and now it's going to get more interesting for the players that are watching um, is that it is so important to maintain your creativity but in the end the coach decides if you're going to play or not so maintain your creativity within the structures the team provides we're going to discuss two big tactical principles within field hockey um, when we have the ball and when we don't have the ball and um, i'm going to share my vision on um, a model that i use a lot a model that i use in dinos so for the dinos players watching or for the dinos coaches watching this definitely should not be new and the boys and girls that i've coached in nationals or regionals last year should also not be completely new to it uh, but this is a model that i like to use uh, it's based on the principles of Thomas Tickleman, who is um, um, uh, quite a famous coach in the Netherlands, and Pep Guardiola, who is an extremely famous soccer coach currently at Manchester City for the, for the soccer lovers uh, under us. Um, I believe that we should divide the field up into certain areas, and within those certain areas, players need to make decisions. So if we look at the field, um, I, if we look at the length of the field, I always divide uh, the field up into five zones. Zone zero, does anyone know what zone zero could be? For, for zone zero uh, in dinos and in, in a lot of the FHA teams is the own circle. So that means um, basically every spot inside the own circle, including the circle line. And that's really important. We use zone one. Zone one is everything outside the circle, including the 23 meter line. And that's also important. Zone two. The area between the 23 meter line and the halfway line zone three is between the halfway line and the opponent's 23 meter line and zone four is basically the other 23 oh that's a bit fast maybe um i personally like to do it again like we did in the start zone is that zone four is everything outside the circle in the attacking 23 and then we have what we call the attacking circle. I don't know why we've never called that zone five, but um, in a model that I've used up till now, the attacking circle is called the circle. So this is not something that I invented. It. It's, it's based on the principles of, of the acceleration principles of Thomas Tickleman. Um, but I, I find it really useful to identify what we can and cannot do in certain zones of the field. So like I said, we have two big, uh, big things in the game. We have when we have the ball and when we don't have the ball. Um, if we look at the zone, zone zero, zone one, two, three, and four, and the attacking circle, within every zone, a player needs to 
hold on to certain rules. Um, for an example, zone zero inside the own circle when we have ball possession. Does anyone have a guess what we should be doing when we have the ball in zone zero or what we should not be doing when we're in zone zero with the ball? When we have the ball in zone zero, we should try to get the ball out of the circle. That is absolutely correct. I think it was Ella. Shailen. 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 Oh, sorry. <laughs> you sound like Ella. Um, absolutely correct. Uh, in zone zero, uh, which is the, the most defensive part of the field, um, we need to get the ball to a safe zone. Um, if we look at what we need to do with the ball, it is important to do 100% safe passes. We do not want to take a lot of risk when we're outletting from the circle. Oh, I'm a, bit, a little bit fast. Um, if the opponent have the ball and they end up in our zone zero, I think it's pretty clear that the most important part is to defend the goal, but also to be in a position that we can counter. Zone one, does anyone have an idea? So zone one is outside the circle, but still inside our own 23. What should we do either in ball possession or in an opponent ball possession? If, if the opponent have the ball, we should be at least man to man. Man to man. Making sure they don't, they can't get into zone zero. That is extra. So what area do we want to defend if we're in zone, zone one? Zone zero. We want to defend zone zero. We want to defend the circle. Good one. And in ball possession, so let's say uh, you recovered the ball, so you defended the circle, and you now have the ball. What is important? You should look for a pass farther up the field. Further up the field. Does that mean you want to pass it from zone one to zone, five, uh, zone, zone four? No, only to zone two. Only to zone two. So a low risk pass. I think, I think that's what you're trying to say. Um, so we want to, want to outlet in a safe way. We want to create safe options. And we want to create safe options for our teammates. Um, this is what Grant said. We want to deny the opponent's opportunities, so deny them coming into circle or in zone zero. And again, we want to be counter ready. Zone two. Anyone? Um, yeah, I think for zone two, you're trying to work the ball up into the further stages of the field. Absolutely. So, so when we have the ball, you're talking about, I assume. Yeah, yeah, when we have the ball. Yeah. So, would you say that in zone two, you take a lot of risk, or a little bit of risk, or no risk at um, all? I think you can take some risk, but you're still trying to play it safe and trying to put the safe path on. I think uh, you're absolutely right. It is. Uh, you want to hold on to ball position, um, indeed. Taking, don't take a lot of risk. Easy passes, easy passes to speed up the game, and you want to move the play. Uh, do you have any idea what you would do defensively in zone two? Stay close, know where your man is the whole time, and stay pretty close to him, because they could obviously get into your zone one with a couple of simple passes. Mm -hmm. And do you want to pressure a lot, or no, not well, not a lot, but you want to make sure you're pretty, you're pretty close, maybe like less than a foot, two feet away. Well, I think I think that's pretty spot on. Um, I've also put in there you want to slow down the game, give your own teammates time to recover, to help you. You want to intercept the ball, uh, but breakdown of play and and block the gameplay. It's more important at this point than really intercepting the ball. Oh, I made a mistake here. Zone three, I'll give you that. Um, in zone three, so we have ball position in opponent half. 
I think it's important that we dare to take risks. We want to do a fast passing game. So if we see an option, we pass the option. We want to play the space. So yes, we want to transfer the ball and let the opponent run more than we do. But when we can walk straight towards the goal, why not? Um, when the opponents have the ball in zone three, we want to apply pressure on the ball. We want to play to intercept. And we want to make sure that they don't feel comfortable. Zone four, anyone? Score. Score, indeed. When we have the ball, we want to create opportunities. What else? Um, you're trying to get the, the ball into the D, so whether that means taking it in or making a baseline run and passing it into the middle. You're just trying to operate so that you can get the shot. Really good. And um, if the opponent has the ball? Being ready to get back and um, able to help defend as it comes closer and closer to zone zero or do that. Yes. Well, I think um, and all those things are right. Uh, I think in, in ball position, we want to create opportunities. And then I love I love it when people say we want to score goals, and that is absolutely what we want. But in order to score goals, we need to be able to create opportunities. Um, in zone four, if we have the ball, you can take a lot of risk. And I think this is one of the zones where the coach has the least influence uh, because this comes down to individual one-on-ones, individual two-on-ones, um, making sure you do good runs. Um, and you position yourself so that you can be dangerous and you can score, score those goals. When the opponent has the ball, you, we want to apply pressure in this zone. And that mainly is because they have a really long way to go before they get to zone zero. So this could be an ideal moment to put pressure because if it goes wrong, to be honest, you've got a, a long way where you can recover. Um, you want to make sure that the opponent takes risk and, and guess for the wrong pass. Oh. Has anyone ever seen this one? Does anyone know what I'm trying to say with this picture? So if we talked in the, we talked in this, this part about the different zones in the field. So from the back up to the, up, all the way up to the forwards. Let me go through this a little bit quicker. And so we had zone zero, own circle, all the way up to zone five and the opponent circle. What could be, what could this be? What, it, what area is highlighted? It's the middle of the field. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Well, <laughs> that is exactly what it is, and I'm happy, happy you're saying that. And um, so, like we can divide the field up into certain blocks all the way from the back, we can also do that from the middle of the field or the inside of the field and the outside of the field. So, this is a system that's actually used in uh, indoors a lot. And we talk about, in this case, the inner lane. So that's the areas between the two goals all the way up to the field. Any guess what these two line, lanes would be? The middle lanes. The middle lanes, pretty good. I call them, but it, in the end, this also comes down to, to what the coach calls it. I, we call this the right inner lane and the left inner lane. We should be able to guess these now. We talk about inside of the field and we talk about outside of the field. We've got an inner lane, the outer lane. an outer lane indeed. So we've got a right outer lane and a left outer lane. So where I personally work with um with the zones and a lot of uh, 
discipline in what you can and what you cannot do. I personally use the lanes more to tell my players where they are and where they can go to. Oh. But um, same as um, the blocks or the zones that we had from the back, are there um, things you can imagine where you can take more risk or where you can take less risk when you're playing in the inner lane or in the outer lane? Uh, I think you can take more risks on the outer lanes because it's easier to just pressure them off the sidelines. Good one. And if we can choose where we want to attack, would you attack an outer lane, an inner lane, or the, the main inner lane? Um, you want to attack in the main inner lane because you can go either to the left or to the right side and it creates more options. Absolutely, great answer, and I think um, I think this is this is extremely important. Um, it frustrates me when I hear coaches say, "You need to attack the outside. You need to go around, attack the baseline." And I'm always like, "Well, if we can attack the inner lane and we can go straight to the goal, why not? Why go outside?" Of course, when there's a player from the other team that's standing right in front of you, we need to go around. But in essence. We always want to attack the shortest way to the goal. Um, if we combine these two, and now it gets a little bit complicated, but if we combine these two, we can set up the whole field in different blocks. So these are the blocks that we use in dinos and that, uh, that I like to use. Um, so can anyone guess how we would call the um, the block on the right bottom. What area of the field is it? How do we call it now? Outer right zone one. Sorry? Outer right zone one. Perfect answer. Oh. And we're, apparently we're starting at the top. So but it, how would we call the top left um, block? Outer left uh, zone four. Okay, and outer left zone four, do you think you have a lot of freedom as a player? Or do you think um, you need to play it safe? That's where you have the most freedom. <laughs> indeed, absolutely true. Well, maybe, maybe the attacking circle, but oh, indeed, yes. the higher up the field in zone four, in the outer lanes, that is where you have the most freedom of all. So this way, we can divide the whole field up into, um, into certain little small blocks. And now it comes down to the coach's preference and, and the decisions you make as a team and what rules you apply in what zone and where do you want to pressure. Often you hear coaches say, okay, when the, when the left back has the ball, we're going to pressure, pressure the left back. However, if the left back of the opponent's team is in zone four or in zone three or maybe even in zone two it gets difficult because we want to pressure but those are three completely different situations um instead of saying let's pressure the left back a better option could be um we're going to pressure the ball every time the ball gets into uh zone three uh right or out of lane or every time the ball is in zone four, left or outer lane. It also comes down to uh, if we defend and we have the ball in zone one, one left inner lane, we maybe want to always create an option in the zone two left outer and zone two inner. So there's two diagonal options. Uh, things you can discuss with your coach is you never want to have two players in one block. So there's never two players in zone three left in a lane. Because if there's two players, we make the field too small and we cannot pass. Um, so that comes down to the, the, the preference of the coach and what fits in with the team. 
I hope it makes sense. Um, what we didn't discuss yet is the zones in the circles and especially the attacking circle. Um, in, with my teams, if the ball is in the defending circle, it's mainly getting the ball out of the circle as fast as possible in the safest way possible. The attacking circle is different. That's where we want to create opportunities. Does anyone have an idea from which part of the circle the most goals are scored? Is that top of the circle? Is that in front of the goalie? Is that from the baseline? Top of the circle? Top of the circle. Anyone else? Um, I think the top of the circle and the penalty spot and like in the middle because if the cross comes in, that's probably the easiest spot to slap it in. I think it's closer to the post. Closer to the post? Yeah. Well, if we divide the circle up into three areas, this area is what we call the inner circle. The most goals are scored from this area, so closest to the goalie. Um, when we have the ball in that zone, there are certain techniques that you need to use. What I already heard some, someone telling something about the posts. So what techniques do we think are important in zone red in the inner circle? Like not passing. You're just trying to get a shot off at the goal, no matter how good it is. Mm -hmm. And does that mean if you if you take a shot that you wind your shot up and, and you go for a full size hit, or would you rather go for a small push on the goalie? Small push, because it's not as easy to defend or pick off by the defenders. Other techniques do you, that you think that could be really useful in this area? Like holding two people on the post um, when the ball's close so that you can easily tap it in if there's rebounds or something. Yeah, tap it in, rebounds. I think the, the holding the two people on the post is more a tactical um, decision. So in techniques, what we want to do is uh, use scales with our hands apart. And when we go for a full size shot and, and wind the shot up, the goalie is going to be there and it's going to be hard to score. So hands apart, pushing techniques, uh, sweeping, sweeping with hands apart, uh, the squeeze shot, really effective in this area. And I'm missing one in there that I, that I see that I didn't put in there. Can anyone, and I've already heard it, can anyone um, tell me which one I forgot to put in? Tips? Tip, perfect answer. Thanks, Dave. Tip-ins are extremely important in, in nowadays uh, field hockey. Uh, I believe it was in the, and now i got to say it right, 2014 or 2016 World Cup. 80% of the goals were scored from the red area with a tip-in. This part of the circle is what we call the middle circle. Uh, what kind of techniques should we use in a middle circle? Anyone? Can we do a full size shot or not? I'm guessing like um, quick wind ups, but not as quick as if it was in circle one, but not full, full wind ups. Absolutely. Do you think you're able to sweep? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think if you have a quick sweep, you can do it. In my opinion, um, within circle two, you use techniques with your hands apart, um, but you can also use the techniques with your hands lower on the stick. So uh, we sometimes call it the Indian shot or the, the short shot where your hands are at the bottom of your grip. Um, pushing the turn shot and the squeeze shot again. The forehand sweeps. Uh, extremely important technique in this area where you can uh, have a relative safe and good shot. 
uh, backend sweep, of course, and potentially tip-ins, uh, but that's mainly more towards the red circle than it is towards the outside of the yellow circle. Green circle, anyone? What techniques would be used in the green circle? Hands apart. Hands apart, why? Well, you have time to take those bigger swings. Mm -hmm. And if you have a, I think if you have a bigger swing, you want to have your hands together for a full on hit. That's definitely what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought. So in, in this area, shots, sweeps, would you push from the green circle? Not really. Not really. Uh, there's one extra special technique that comes into place uh, trying to shoot from the uh, score from the green circle and that's the drag flick uh, that is some kind of push but um, that is only in special occasions uh, why is my screen black okay is everyone's screen black yeah. yeah. Yes. That's not what I want. No, now we see you. Oh, let's, let's see if I can get it back. Okay. Um, one second. The technique is not doing what I want to do. Because I have some videos and then I have some questions about those videos. Okay. One second. You guys are still looking at me? Yes. It must be interesting to see me search for my documents. Okay. And I think we're seeing the setup yeah, for. You're, you're, you're good now, yeah. Okay. Cool. Sorry for that. It's still uh, getting a little bit used to the to the technique. Um, a, a clip uh, from the, the Field Hockey Canada under 17 team playing a game against uh, uh, Ranger Root uh, in the Netherlands. And what we'll see is we'll see one of the girls um, attack the circle and then make a decision. And I'm curious about what you guys think of what she's doing. So, can anyone tell me what zone or what lane she is in right now? Is she in zone four or zone one? I can start it again. What zone is zone she in? Four in her right. Zone, zone four. four. Zone four, inner right, perfect. So is this a zone where you have a lot of freedom or not a lot of freedom? A lot of freedom. A lot of freedom, correct answer. So if we look at this situation now, what, do we, what would be a good move to make or a good action to do for the girl with the ball? You want to take a lot of risk. Maybe pass to one of her players. Okay. So pass it back. Is that something we we like to do? Pass the ball back back to a different zone. Go back and back. Yeah. Dribble back and then go back in. Pull it back and go back in. I think that's that's a really great answer. Um, I think in this. This moment, we want the player to take a lot of risk. And um, so what we'll see is that the girl runs the ball. 
and she runs in. Do you think as a coach, I would be happy with what she did or not? Can you replay it? Yes. What do we think of this? Yeah, no, it was fine. She tried something. It didn't come off, but, but she tried to create something. Yes, and I think that is the perfect answer again. Um, what we see is a girl that attacks, takes risk, try to play the one on two maybe, gets the ball again, takes risks again, and this could just as easily be either a penalty corner or if she would have beaten this girl. And I, do you guys, can you guys see my cursor? Or not. Yep. So even if she would have beaten, if she would have beaten this girl, we would have had a two on one on the goal on the on on defender number three over here, which would be a perfect situation. So as a coach, of course, I am sad that it didn't work out. But this player in this specific situation made every right call. She has the ball. She goes for the one on one. She plays the one on one. It didn't work out. Good job. Another video, and this video has a little bit more to do with the lanes. Uh, this is, um, I think it was 2018 World Cup, but I can be wrong. Um, we have the Netherlands playing Germany. Uh, you'll see that um, the Netherlands will intercept the ball in a certain way. So they intercept the ball here. Which zone are they in right now? Ball is here. Zone two. Zone two. Yes, perfect. So when they go forward, what were the things that were important in zone two? Do we take a lot of risk or not a lot of risk? Lower risk. Lower risk. So a safe pass. But we want to get the ball to a free space. So was this a is this pass? Is that a big risk or a low risk? Pretty low risk. Pretty low risk. Yeah, it's, uh, there's no one around this player, so it's the right decision. The pass is going forward. That's something that we really want to. We want to go and attack the other goal. Um, so we have the ball. So right now we're on the edge of zone two and zone three, so the player can take a little bit more risk. Um, do we see where the, the player is passing the ball to? I think he's passing to the girl on the inside uh, on the halfway line there. Yes, so the ball will go to that player over there. Is that a good pass? Yes, a very good pass. <laughs> very good pass. Why is it a good pass? Because he's played into a player with a lot of space going forward. Yes, and if we were talking about the lanes and attacking outer lanes or inner lanes or right or inner, right inner lanes, which lane is the ball in now? Inner. Inner. Is that where we want to have the ball on the attack? Yes. Yes. So this is an extremely good pass. If we go a little bit deeper, this play even bound a couple of players. We pass the ball to a running player on the inside lane that can now take more risk. Let's see it again. Intercepted in zone. Oh, turn off the sound. Intercepted in zone two. We go forward, safe pass, perfect safe pass. Goes forward because that's what we like to do. We look for the pass on the inside if possible. We look for the forward pass into the next zone. Well, it comes over there, passes it forward, shot on that. Is that a, a good attack? Yep. Are we happy with 
the, the, the overall performance of, of Holland in this case? Yes. I agree. I think, uh, I think Holland did, did everything right. And the moment you get in the circle, the, the goalie comes up really quick, makes a great save. But I think in, in general, uh, a lot of good decisions are made uh, during this attack. So beautiful pass. Um, what other thing could he have done? I think you could. You guys can do that. Uh, I was gonna say just um, one on one to the net because there was only one defender on him. Yes. If the the the, the forward would have played a one on one over here, and. If the, the four would have been successful, it would have been a one-on-one -on, -one on the goalie. Um, so great pass. Yeah, but if the one-on-one -on -one was played over here, that's also fine. No goal. Um, not a situation. So we are defending this net now. Uh, we're playing Argentina, so we're the Netherlands. We're defending this net. Uh, Argentina is attacking us. Um, what zone is the ball in right now? We want to attack that circle. So this is our own circle. So zone one. Zone one. So. How do we defend in zone zone one? Man to man, most of the time. Man to man, most of the time, indeed. What do we want to defend? Zone zero. Zone zero. Yeah, we want to make sure that they don't score. So they attack. We intercept the ball. So the ball is for for a little bit in. Zone zero is on one, but we get it outside the circle. Um, so right now we have the ball in zone one. What do we want to do when we have the ball in zone one? Take low risk passes. Absolutely. And would you want to go to the inner lane right now already? Outletting. In outletting, yeah. Would you want no, this no. Way to, go to the outer lane or straight back to the inner lane at this point? I think you'd want it to go into the outer lane because that's the most secure path. Yes, absolutely. So there's the, the least amount of risk is going this way. We're in zone one, so we don't want to take a lot of risk. So what we'll see is that the player will run the space into zone one and it stays for a little bit in the outer lane. So this player it goes on a little bit more of an adventure. So he's gonna to try to go forward again. This pass, what do you think a coach will say from this pass? This one, boom. I think I think that pass was a little bit too risky because if that player had intercepted it, it would have been a four and two because, and then it wouldn't have, I think it wouldn't have resulted well for the, for the Holland team. I think that's, that's a great analysis. Uh, as it, like it is, we can't deny that it is a great pass and it's a beautiful game changing pass. But as a coach at this point, well, I would be quite scared by that my player was doing that. I would have probably preferred that my player would have passed the ball over here, over the backhand of this player, or maybe even just hit it up the field. But this is not a spot where we want to be. Maybe throw an aerial, but this pass through zone one with a lot of risk over that player, it's, it's a great pass but a little bit of a risk. But we have the ball, 
right now. Do we see where the player is running? To which lane? Inner. Inner. Is it good or bad? Good. Good. Why? Because it's um, straight to the net. Absolutely true. See? And the player doesn't pass until he feels pressure. So the, the longer we can go straight up through the inner lane, the better. Player's running up, no one's attacking him. So why should he pause or why should he go to a different lane? In the end, he pauses the ball to a free player. And they score a goal. Let's see it again from the start. So we defend. We defend the circle, great interception, perfect running it to the outside. A little bit too much risk, but successful. So the, and if you're successful, you're always right. Pass goes forwards, plays the one on one, tries to get a penalty corner. We create a shot on net, score a goal. Happy with the results? Yep. Yep, if you score, you're always right. Um, another situation from the, the Canada against the Orange Root game. Um, but now when the opponent has the ball. Oh. So we are trying to score in the net closest to us. So they, they're going to get the ball in which zone? This is the circle where we are trying to score. What zone? Four. Zone four, correct. Oh, oh, again. So they have the ball in zone four now. What do we want to do? Take risk in our pressing or take no risk in our pressing? Take risk in the pressing. Take risk in the pressing. Why? Because you can recover it over the length of the field. You've got a lot of space to recover if you make a mistake. And if, it, if you don't, then, you know, it's good. It's good, indeed. So we have a low-risk, high-reward situation. If we pressure the ball right now, you know, we're up the field. If we can recover the ball, we're really close to the attacking circle. If we pressure and we don't steal the ball, we've got a long way back to recover. So what you'll see is they pass it back. So this player, should this player now press or fall back? Press. Why? Because there's low risk of, the, um, of uh, getting scored on. Absolutely. See, good pressing. There should be someone covering this girl because if they pass it, they can get out. But for now, great situation. We're close. Beautiful move to the inside of the circle. Walks the baseline. What kind of technique does this player need to use right now in order to score? A turnaround. A turnaround shot, squeeze shot. So. Are we in the inner, the middle, or the outer circle at, at this point? The inner. Inner. Perfect answer again. So what we'll see. So this, oh, no. So what we'll see is this girl is going for a tomahawk. So we pressure the ball. We pressure the ball. We recover the ball. Beautiful pass. Beautiful move inside. Ball comes. Girl gets the ball. Goes for a backhand shot on net. Is that is a tomahawk? Is that a technique with hands together or hands apart? Together. Together. So is in the inner circle, is that a position where we love to shoot with our hands together, or would we like to use techniques with our hands apart? Hands apart. Hands apart, correct. So if this girl would have made a backhand sweep right now instead of the full tomahawk. The net is quite open over here. 
and we've got a running goalie. But because she winds her shut up, the goalie can get close, and in the end, there's no goal. Yeah, so using the right technique in the right space. Oh, Ashley, free hit down the other way. Oh, oh last oh, one. Oh, Ashley, free hit down the other way. Last one, then I've been perfect with my time. Um, uh, game, Canada against Malaysia. Uh, Canada is up to the 3-2. to two. Uh, Final quarter. I believe it's even the final. Um, oh, Ashley, free hit down the other way. What zone is the ball in right now? So, Malaysia White is attacking this way. Zone two. Zone two, indeed. So, what do we want to do defensively right now? Um, like break down their play and intercept passes. True, correct, good answer. Wasting time. They took too long. And it so, are we happy with this situation right now? No. No. <laughs> How could we improve this situation? Um, the, the guy in the middle um, could step up to pressure the ball. Yes. And the, the guy defending the um, guy running into the circle just keeps running. Yes, I think that, that's a great analysis. I think um, this player is a little bit late. He should have been higher up the field to provide pressure. But um, this is a situation what we're in right now, so we have to deal with it. So what is the main objective right now? Keep him out of the circle. Keep him out of the circle. And what we'll see is one of the Canadian players exactly doing that. Uh, however, I think the player is taking quite the risk. Forward. Me or take your... Did we see what he did? Yeah, he, he ran through the player and expected something that he, uh, he didn't expect the pullback. Okay, and look at his foot. Be or take. He intentionally drew, uh, kicked the ball so that they get the foot and it breaks some play and so that they can get more players back. Yes. So is this, um, is he doing a good job in trying to get the, the, the ball out of the circle? Trying to break down the play? I mean, he did it. It's probably not the best way to do it, but it worked. <laughs> Indeed. So he does a great job in making sure the ball doesn't get into the circle. Is this, however, is this high risk or low risk? High risk. High risk, really high risk. If we're talking about a final loss period, you know, coming in. What we'll see is he, he tries to do everything to get the ball out of the circle. He's top of the circle, caught the foot just outside the circle. So he's lucky here that he doesn't get a penalty corner. What zone are we in? One. Zone one. So again, what is the most important thing at this point? Not letting them get into your circle. Not letting them get into your circle. Oh, Ashley, free hit down the other way. You're wasting time. They took too long, and it's Mio breaking forward. Mio taking on pros, top of the circle, caught the foot just outside the circle. Mio takes the free hit. So what did he do right now in his last part, which is really good? What's the difference between this and this? He steps out of the D. Absolutely. Making sure that they can't get the through into the D. Mm -hmm. Because what is the most important job right now? Protect the D. Protect the D. So if you're standing inside the D, can you protect the D? No. No. So he does a great job in getting outside the Just circle. Play on quickly, surrounded by red shirts. Get behind the ball. Ashley, three down the other way. They'll recover the ball and passes it to an outside lane. It doesn't connect with a player, but it's the, the lowest risk there is. There's the ball, trying to attack, he gets out, we recover the ball, ball goes away to an outside lane. 
happy with the end result? Yep. Yep. We're, we're three to two up, five minutes before time. Ball's in an outside lane, and we can count. Thank you for listening. Um, I hope that we learned something from it. Uh, I hope it was interesting. Are there any questions right now at this point? Comments? Thank you for sharing this. Oh. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, again, I hope we all learned something from it. Um, I'll post the, the presentation and I'll post uh, the recorded version of the seminar. Um, thank you all for being here. And if there's no further questions, I'm going to end it now. Do we have any more planned? Any more what? Any more of the seminars planned? Um, we probably want to plan another one for next Saturday. Uh, we're going to evaluate and see, see how this one is received. And then um, if you guys want, we're going to do another one. All right, cool. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I liked this. It was really cool. Cool. Thank you. Thank you for your time. And I'll connect. I'll disconnect the uh, connection.